with this one? Yeah. All right, good. Cool. We are glad that you're here with us today. Technical difficulties or not, it's going to be a great day. We have a picnic, uh, like Pastor Tom said, after first ser or after second service today at 11 o'clock. So um, I'm pretty sure you won't want to stick around and hear the message twice. So feel free to stay down in the Fellowship Hall, drink coffee for an extra hour, uh, come back and be with us for the picnic this morning. As we're going over the announcements today, if you want to fill out uh, the connect cards that we have in the bulletins, those help us know who, uh, who's in worship and who we can reach out to to invite back. And uh, if you're watching online today, we'd love to hear where you're watching from. It is a, it's going to be a special day. I have my father-in-law, Calvin Schulte. He's going to help out with the worship leading for, uh, for first service this morning. Um, and in our bulletin, if you want to help or if you want to look with me, we'll go over those announcements that we have for the upcoming couple of weeks. There is still time to send a birthday card to Dr. Guess. His birthday is on Tuesday, July 13th. That's his 100th birthday. Uh, so please, even if it is a little bit late, please consider sending him a card. And then July 18th through the 22nd, we have VBS coming up. Um, and so there's a lot of information in there about VBS. There's going to be food donations that are needed. So please watch for social media and emails for those coming up. Uh, there is still time to sign up for VBS. If you have not done that yet, please do it ASAP. And then uh, the same with if you are interested in helping with VBS, please sign up as soon as possible for that as well. There is no book club in August or in July. It'll meet again on Tuesday, August 17th. And then we've decided with how busy families are, we're going to take um, August, or July and August off for the connection. So there will be no connection for those two months as well. We'll start again in September. Uh, please consider sending Harlan Bone a card. Uh, we're doing a card shower for him, and his address is there in the bulletin. Uh, we were able to raise $1,375 for the Mutambara Hospital in Zimbabwe, so thank you for that. Um, I, read, I read there that they're facing their third wave of COVID coming in, so that money is going to greatly help with supplies that are needed for that. We're trying something new this year for our seniors. It's called the Silver Ceremony. Um, I forgot to put in the letter that I sent home to parents that it starts at 6 p.m. That's kind of valuable information. So that's just for seniors and their parents, but that's on Wednesday, July 28th. And then Tom mentioned about the Global Methodist Church New Day Conference. Uh, we, we trust that God is going to be in and through the service today. We're glad you're here. We know you could be doing a million other things on your Sunday morning, but we're glad that you're going to spend it with us. Um, and we, we do trust that God is going to be in and through the service today. So let's take a moment to center our hearts for worship. Good morning. Would you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Give, lang give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His name love the stone rejected by the builders has now become the cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Please remain standing for our opening hymn.
Please join me in this morning's opening prayer. As we gather today around your name, we pray that you would fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I don't know how I'm going to move around and yell at you guys during the sermon today, but we'll make it work. Uh, please be seated. This morning, before we, um, before we go through our prayer of celebration and care, I do have a note that um, we were passed this morning. Roger Hoff's niece's significant other, Jason, passed away in an ATV accident last night, um, and they have two small children together. So we do want to remember uh, that family this morning in our prayers as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the beauty that, that this earth is, God, that we get to enjoy your creation. Lord, we thank you for the sunshine today, and God, we thank you for the rain that we've received over the past few days. Lord, when we cry out to you, we know that you hear us, and sometimes, God, it feels like you don't, but over the past few days, Lord, it feels like you have. And, and God, we thank you so much for that beautiful rain that we've received, and God, we pray that you would continue to bring that, Lord, those timely rains that we need. So, Lord, as we look towards harvest and we look towards fall, we pray, God, that you would be with our farmers and our ranchers, God, and continue to lift them up and, and to help them through one of the more difficult seasons that they may have gone through. God, today we, we want to remember all those kids that are at Christie's camp with her and all the adult and chaperones that are there right now. Lord, we pray that as they're finishing up down there that they would uh, continue to learn about Jesus and, and meet him in a way that maybe they never have before and to start a fire in their souls to learn more about you and to, to be kingdom people, God. So we thank you for Christie and for those that are helping to put that on. We pray that you would continue to bless them at their time at camp. God, today we do want to pray for, uh, for, the, for Roger Hoff's niece and, and their family right now, Lord. We pray as they struggle with this, uh, with this loss, God, that you would be with them. Yeah, that you would be with those beautiful children, Lord, and that you would remind them that they don't go through these times alone. God, that they have so many people around them that love and care for them. So, Lord, we just pray right now that you would wrap your arms around that family and let them know that they're loved and they're cared for. And, Lord, as we continue to look at our prayer list, we pray that you would be with Anna and with Jensen and his recovery and with Maggie. And Lord, please be with the family and friends of Jane Johnson and be with Mildred and Sheila and Harlan and Shirley. Lord, we know that uh, there are so many things that are going on with so many people and, and we know, God, that you have them all in your heart. And we pray, Lord, that you would reach your healing hand out to each and every one of those people, God, and give them the healing touch that they would need. So, God, we, af we ask and offer all these prayers in the way that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and give us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please rise for our next hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
can be seated. <clears throat> this morning's scripture comes from Psalms 30, verses 1 through 12. I exalt you, Lord, because you pulled me up. You didn't let my enemies celebrate over me. Lord, my God, I cried out to you for help, and you healed me. Lord, you brought me up from the grave and brought me back to life from among those who are going down to the pit. You who are faithful to the Lord, sing praises to him. Give thanks to his holy name. His anger lasts only for seconds, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay all night, but by morning, joy. When I was comfortable, I said, I will never stumble because it pleased you, Lord. You made, me, you made me a strong mountain, but then you hid your presence. I was terrified. I cried out to you, Lord. I begged my Lord for mercy. What is to be gained by my spilled blood, by my going down into the pit? Does dust thank you? Does it proclaim your faithfulness? Lord, listen and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. You took off my funeral clothes and dressed me up in joy so that my whole being might sing praises to you and never stop. Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. If we have any children here this morning, I'd love for you to come up for a minute at Children's Church. promise I'm not that scary. Tom is way scarier than I am, so you guys got it lucky today. Normally I'd come and sit down by you guys, but with our technical difficulties today I'll have to be up here for it. Um, have you guys ever been to a fair or an amusement park or a carnival? Have you ever seen a roller coaster? Have you guys ever ridden a roller coaster? Yeah? Was it scary? How about the adults? Who in here has ever ridden a roller coaster? Quite a few of you, okay. Very good. I want to show you guys a video of what it looks like to ride my favorite roller coaster at Valley Fair. So if you kind of get a little sensitive watching some motion stuff, maybe you don't want to pay attention too close to it, but here's the video of it. There's usually a high-pitched scream coming from me while we're going through some of these as well, too. That's called the wild thing, and that wasn't the whole ride at Valley Fair, but it was a piece of it that, um, that, that when you're there and you ride on it, you would get to see. Now the wild thing has a couple of safety precautions on it. One of them, when you sit down in the car, is you put a little seatbelt on, like a little lap belt. Um, and then there's a bar that comes down that you pull. And I like to pull it so that I have belly on top of it, underneath it, as hard as I can. I like to almost be uncomfortable with how hard I pull that, uh, <laughs> that bar down because I don't want to go anywhere. Um, I know that it's designed for my safety, but I like to have that bar there. Let me ask you this. If that bar wasn't there, would you ride the roller coaster? How about you adults? If the, if the bar wasn't in front of you on a roller coaster, would you ride it? Well, why not? It's designed for safety, right? It's designed to keep you in the car when you go through the crazy ups and downs. And Jesus is a lot like that in our lives. We're going to have ups and downs, just like a roller coaster. We're going to have twists and turns. We're going to be going around corners and going crazy, and things are going to seem wild. But as long as we have that bar in front of us, we're going to be OK. And just like in our lives, as long as we have Jesus holding us down, no matter what the ups and downs are, no matter how crazy it seems, the twists and turns, as long as we have Jesus holding us together, we're going to be OK. So I want you guys to always remember that, OK? Will you guys pray with me? 
Jesus, I thank you for these beautiful children and the joy that they bring to our lives. God, we thank you for the joy of having things like roller coasters and amusement parks that we get to go to. God, we just pray that as these children get older, that they'll continue to love and serve you and that we can continue as a, as a congregation, a church, to uh, just to raise them in a way that you'd be proud of. So God, we thank you for them this morning. Amen. All right, here's a sucker, guys. Uh, kids, when you're older, you get to go to Valley Fair with us in middle and you, in middle and high school youth group. We went a couple weeks ago, so remind me, and I will ride the wild thing with you guys when you get older. When we were at Valley Fair, um, I challenged the kids on the bus. I kind of gave that same little message to the bus that I was riding with. Um, and I tried to challenge them to think about their faith as they were at the amusement park that day, as they were going through some of the different rides. Um, and I, I did some of that myself too, and I started to think a little about, a bit about it. And when you ride the wild thing, it actually kind of reminds me of David from the Bible. It kind of reminds me of his life. When you, when you step on the wild thing, the first thing you do is you sit down in a little cart, and then, like I said, you put that lap belt on, and then you put that bar down, and you pull it down. And then you kind of start that long ascent up that first really, really big hill. And when I think about David's life, early on in his life, uh, we read that he fought a lion and a bear. And that was kind of setting him up for what was coming later. Because when he gets to the point where he's talking to Saul about going to fight, or when he's going to fight Goliath, they remember, and he says, I've already defeated a lion and a bear. I know I can do this. And so that, that lap belt and the bar as it comes down, that's kind of like getting David prepared for battle. It's getting him ready for that crazy ride that's about to happen. And then, like I said before, as he goes up that big first hill, that one first hill that really kind of gives you the momentum and the trajectory for the rest of the ride, David fights Goliath. And we read about that story. And that kind of is one of the highest points of David's life. As he's way up top on that, on that big tall mountain, on that big tall hill, he fights Goliath and he wins and people are singing his praises. And they're so excited for him. But, just like we know on roller coasters, if there's a big tall up, then there's going to be a pretty fast downswing, just like David had in his life. The next thing we read about um, a little while later is Saul actually starts to get jealous of David. And he gets so jealous that he plots to kill him. And David hears of this, and so David flees with a group of his people. And just like on the wild thing, after you get up that first really tall hill, you have that really fast decline. And that's where David is now in our story. He's down at the bottom because he has to flee and he has nothing. The only weapon that he finds is the sword that he actually had to kill Goliath that was stored at the, at the temple of Nob. But, just like on our roller coasters, things go back up. David, when he's in the cave, he's in a place called the Negev, and he's in this cave. And Saul uh, and his men are there. They know that David and his people are in the area, and so they're coming to destroy them. And Saul needs to use a cave to relieve himself. And the funny thing is, is the cave that he chooses is actually the cave that David and his men are hiding in. And while Saul is in there, David sneaks up from behind him, and he takes his knife, and he cuts off just a little piece of his cloak. And when Saul's done, he's leaving the cave, and he gets a little bit away from the cave, and David comes to the entrance of it, and he says, Saul, Saul, look. He said, I could have killed you, but I didn't. Instead of killing you, I just snuck up, and I took just a little piece of your cloak. See, we're on the same team. And this changes Saul's heart, and he allows him to be back in the good graces. So David's life goes back on that upswing, and he's going back towards the top of that mountain again. After Saul passes away, David becomes king of Judah and Israel. After some skirmishes and things happen, he becomes king. And as he's up there on the top, we remember what happens next. And he has his struggle with Bathsheba. And again, David's life goes down just like on that roller coaster. The ups and the downs, they keep coming. We're going to stop there with David's life, but I do want to talk about the, the scripture that we read today. When we read in Psalm 30, it's later on in David's life when he pens this psalm. And as he's penning this psalm, um, I believe he's thinking back to those different times in life. And it's almost like a roller coaster as we read through Psalm 30. 
It begins with David's praise of God, who delivered him from what seemed like certain death in verses 1 and 3. It says, I will exalt you, Lord. You lifted me up out of the depths, and, I didn't, and you did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead, and you spared me from going down to the pit. It's like David's getting in that car, and he's starting up that big hill. And then David calls out for others to join in his celebration. He says, sing the praises of the Lord. You, his faithful people, praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. And then, just as David felt established like he was a strong mountain, the Lord hid his face from him, and he felt dismayed. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, you favored me, and you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. And then it's like that big drop comes again. And we read in verses 8 and 9, To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I'm silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? And then just like down on the bottom, just like on a roller coaster, it comes right back up. And the Lord responds positively, turning David's mourning into dancing and endless thanksgiving. We read that in 12, or 10, 12, or 10, 11, and 12. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. So often it feels like when we're in the church or, or we're, we're called Christians, we have that label on us, people just expect our lives to be good. They expect our lives not to have too many crazy ups and downs. They expect, oh, you're the Jesus guy. Nothing can ever be wrong with you. But I think as Christians, honestly, we face those ups and downs almost more than anybody else. We face those highs and we face those lows. Sometimes those lows are brought on by ourselves. Sometimes... Uh, uh, I have a hurt foot right now because I went to Christie's camp for one day and the kids told me that I should jump off the water trampoline. And at 33, I can't do it like I did when I was 25. And so I was thinking, oh man, why me? My foot hurts. That was something brought on by myself. God didn't make my foot hurt. I thought that I could do something that I couldn't and now my foot hurts. But in our life, sometimes we bring those things on our own. Sometimes we struggle with certain sins. Sometimes we struggle with different things in our lives that we need to cast out, that we need to get rid of, that we need to lay at the foot of the cross and leave there. And then those lows bring us down. Those sins, they bring us to a pit. At the worst part of my life, it's because I was drinking and I was sleeping around and I was doing all these things in life that were there to bring me down to a lower spot. And I cried out, God, why me, why me? But when I looked around, I didn't need to say why me. I understood why it was. It's because of the things that I were doing in my own life. But sometimes there's things in life that happen that, um, that are beyond our control. Sometimes there are things in life that when we lose people or somebody gets sick, those things are beyond our control. And those are the times in life when we need to sit back in that cart that we're going through in life and just realize that no matter what, God has control. When you ride on a roller coaster, it feels like you're going to fly out. It feels like you're not going to make it through. It feels like you're going to scream and you're going to be terrified the whole time. But those things are designed to keep us in. It would be really bad business for amusement parks if they were losing people every couple of weeks. But when we have Jesus in our lives, when we understand that no matter what the highs are, no matter what the lows are, that he's there with us, that he rides with us, and that he's going to be there at the end of the ride with us, that things are going to be okay. A couple of weeks ago, we went on a family vacation. Um, it was a family reunion down in Omaha. And it was one of the most crazy comedy errors on the drive down there that ever could have been. Uh, we got going late. We, uh, we stopped in Sioux Falls, and we were going to eat at the Burger King right by the Flying J. And when we got there, it was like 98 degrees. We walked across the hot parking lot. We had the kids. They were fussy. And we get up to that little spatula that's a door handle for Burger King. And I grab it, and it's closed. And it says that the drive through is open. Well, it's not a lot of joy eating uh, <laughs> drive through food in your car with two small children. So we decided to go through the drive through because Taylor said, you know, the Flying Jade has tables. We can just go over there and we can sit at those tables and it'll be no big deal. So we get our food and we get over there. And I, I am terrible at going to restaurants. 
like if they if they bring me the completely wrong meal, I'll just say thank you and eat it because I I'm too scared to say anything to the waitress. Taylor, she she has no problem being like, nope, that's wrong. You know, take it back, bring the right thing. And so we get there, and there's no tables by themselves. It's just like a Denny's restaurant or something like that. And I said, honey, we can't take our food in a Denny's and eat this as Burger King. They're going to tell us no. She says, it's fine, it's fine. And so she asked the lady, and she's like, oh, yeah, go ahead and take a table. And I'm like, I eat my food as fast as possible because I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they're, we just need to get out of here fast. So we get back on the road from there, and I'm already feeling like, all right, this trip is weird me out a little bit. And she takes over driving from Sioux Falls. We're on our way to Omaha. And we get to Sioux City, and Rory starts crying. Our little girl starts crying in the back seat. And she does this, you know, in the car occasionally, and usually she falls asleep. But she made a noise that parents hear um, from the front seat that you never want to hear. And that noise was, Ugh. And Taylor goes, get back there. And so I get back there just in time to catch some handfuls of puke as, as we're driving down the road. And, and we're driving down the interstate, and we're not sure where to go. We're just on the south side of, of Sioux City, and we got another hour or so to go to Omaha. And she's crying. I'm crying. Taylor's crying. Maddox is laughing because he thinks it's the greatest thing ever. And we're driving down the road. And, and we pull over, and we're in this Love's truck stop parking lot. And we're literally shaking things out. And it, it takes us about a half an hour to get things sort of cleaned up and back on the road. And, uh, we called ahead, and there was a laundromat at the, at the uh, my dad said there was a laundromat at the hotel. And I said, great. I had stopped. I like to go through quarters from time to time. I'm a coin collector, and there's some different errors and things to look at on quarters. And so I had gotten two rolls of quarters, and so I was looking at those on the drive down there, and I'm like, oh, perfect. I got these quarters. You know, when we get the laundromat, we can get the clothes washed. We can get her blankie washed. We get to the hotel, and we start to unload the kids and everything, and I get out of the car. And all I hear is ting, 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 ting. The coin roll I had upside down, and it opened up, and every quarter in that one roll hit the parking lot and was going everywhere. So I'm on my hands and knees underneath pickups and cars trying to pick up these quarters, and we get in, and I go up to the laundromat, and my dad over-exaggerated laundromat because there was one washer and one dryer. And when I looked in there, they were full of ladies' undergarments, and I was like, honey, you're going to have to change those out because I'm not going up there to touch anything. This is a crazy way to start our trip, and I was feeling like, you know what? This is low. This is terrible. Man, just what a way to start this trip. I felt like I was at the bottom of that roller coaster. But as we started to go to sleep that night, um, I pulled out my cell phone and I was scrolling through Facebook. And I seen that there was a headline and it said, a 16-year-old boy had been killed just south of Millbank in a car accident. And my heart sank because I know a lot of 16-year-old boys around this area. And we didn't know a name, we didn't know what was going on. I looked at Taylor and I said, honey, if it's someone that we know we're going to have to go back. And she said, yeah. We found out that it wasn't someone from our community, but it still breaks your heart that a family lost a 16-year-old boy. It showed me that in my moment when I was pitying myself for all of these little things that were going on, and I thought, you know what? Geez, life's so bad. It showed me that this crazy roller coaster of life, we don't know what's going to come next. We don't know if tomorrow is going to be a joy or if tomorrow is going to be a sorrow. We don't know if things are going to be highs or if things are going to be lows. But what we do know is that no matter how high, no matter how low, no matter where we are in this crazy ride that we call life, that if we have Jesus, if he's firmly holding us in that cart, then no matter what life throws at us, we're going to be okay. And whether it's in this life or the next, and as Christians, we don't live for this life. We live for the next one. We have to understand that no matter what the highs are, what the lows are, the ending is going to be beautiful, no matter what that middle part looks like. God has given us this life to live. Sometimes we wake up, we wake up and we say, geez, how can I be here? But this is the life that God has given us to live. We can choose to have joy or we can choose not to have joy. So Christians, friends, brothers, sisters, I want to encourage you today, wherever you are in that ride, choose joy. 
Choose the love that Jesus has for you. And remember that no matter what happens on this life, the next one will be perfect. The next one will get welcomed home into heaven. And our mourning will be turned into dancing forever and ever. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for today. We thank you for this crazy ride that we get to call life. We thank you for the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, Lord. We just pray that as we continue to go through them and that you will remind us that you are there with us, that we face none of these alone. God, we pray for those that are in a low spot in their life right now. God, we pray that you'd continue to be with them. Remind them that they are loved. Remind them they're cared for. God, we pray for those that are on the upswings of their life where things are going good. Remind them, Lord, that those things don't happen on their own, Lord, but they do those with you. So God, as we go from here today, we pray that you would bless our time together as a congregation at the picnic. God, that you would bless our lives and that you would help us to be your people no matter where we go. In your loving and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Would you please join me in the affirmation of faith? Though we have known hardship and pain, though life has not always turned out as we had hoped, we will stand here and say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Though life becomes more complex, the deepest question remains unanswered, and the mystery of faith deepens. We will say, God's steadfast love endures forever. And though the pain of the world often seems more than we can bear or address, we will stand firm in our faith and say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Would you please stand for the doxology? Again, would you join me in the offertory prayer? <clears throat> God of all grace, we can never outgive you. As we give you our financial gifts, help us to use the spiritual gifts you have given us. We thank you for giving to each of us the manifestation of your spirit and common good. To each of us, you have given different spiritual gifts to serve you and your church, to build up each other spiritually. May we serve you financially with our giving and our spiritually through ministry with your gifts for you. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn.
amen. Choose joy. Choose joy. We go up, we go down. But we can choose joy. And when we watch people, our brothers and sisters go through hardships, and when we watch them choose joys in the lowest pit of despair, that gives hope to others. That gives strength to others. This life is short, but the next one is eternal. There will be no ups and downs in the next one, but there are a few here. So let's do our best to live this one the best we can, whether up or down, choosing joy. And when we get to that next life, it'll be joy forever. I can't wait to see you there. I hope it's a while from now, but I can't wait to see you there. But I can't wait to see you at the picnic today too, and next week. If we have a couple of strong, able-bodied men, there's some picnic tables over by the shed. If you could help bring those over for later, that would be great. We love you guys, and we'll see you later.